what's a greenhouse climate battery? Well, I'm about to show you and explain how it works so you can decide if it's something you might wanna to consider too. I'm Natalie Lucier from Waykeeper Farm and Nerdery and I'm here in my greenhouse. It's the end of October and it is currently 30 degrees Celsius, which means I'm wearing a t-shirt, it's nice and warm. Now, if you are considering building a greenhouse and especially a greenhouse that you want to use four seasons out of the year, then you definitely want to know what a climate battery is. So a climate battery is essentially a way to use the Earth's temperature to keep the greenhouse temperature more stable. So the way that it works is that you will dig underneath your greenhouse or some people do it outside of the greenhouse, but we did it underneath. And what you do is you put pipes that will go all the way and snake underneath the ground. And then you have these outlets into your greenhouse that will have a big fan that circulates the air. If it's warm in the greenhouse, the hot air will go into the bottom and underground into the cooler area, which will push the cool air out and into the greenhouse. And if it's cold in the greenhouse, then the cold air will be taken from inside the greenhouse, pushed underground, and then the hotter air, comparatively speaking, from underground will then be pushed back into the greenhouse to heat the greenhouse. So essentially what you're doing is you're able to modulate the temperature of a greenhouse by using the underground temperature, which tends to be more stable than the above ground temperature, which tends to be either much colder in the winter or much hotter in the summer. So while a climate battery is not 100% passive, it's not only relying on the sun because it uses electricity to power the fans, it is a lot less energy intensive than say heating a greenhouse with electric or gas heaters, for example. So this is why we chose to do a climate battery. And I will say it was an extensive project to dig underground before we built our greenhouse, to lay all of these pipes, to purchase the pipes, to think about the layout and how everything is gonna connect underground, put soil back on top. And also what we ended up having to do is add in a sump pump because where we live, we have clay soil and we have a lot of rain in the spring and fall. And because of that, we would have water into our pipes quite easily. And sometimes we still do, even with our sump pump that operates on a regular basis. So what the sump pump does is it sucks the water out of those pipes that we've put underground. And then it has an outlay that we have that just exits the greenhouse. So if you are considering doing a climate battery and you also have a similar climate or a similar soil structure as we do, then definitely consider adding a sump pump and think about where you wanna put it. So in our case, we didn't really plan ahead for the sump pump and we ended up putting it on a corner in the middle of the greenhouse that just doesn't quite make sense for where we wanted the water to go after. So if I were to redo my climate battery setup, I would have thought about where to put that sump pump and I would have put it on the opposite side so that it can uh, really send the water out more easily. Uh, as right now, we actually have kind of a really messy area where we have this pipe running underneath the greenhouse that um, we just didn't have plans for. You may have heard of the term geothermal and some people use that term when calling a climate battery. It's maybe interchangeable and uh, it really comes down to kind of how you build it and how you think about it. So I want to share the sources and resources that we used when we built ours. So the book that I first heard about this concept in depth was The Forest Garden Greenhouse and that is by Jerome Osentowski. So I think this is an excellent resource. He actually um, outlays a lot of different greenhouse designs and his are all permaculture based greenhouses with more permanent things growing in them. So he has fig trees, he has pomegranate trees, and those are things that we personally also want to experiment with. So it was really cool to see how he's doing that in his book. So here you can see how they built some of their climate battery um, setups and they have a very large pipe and then they have the smaller pipes that go underneath and that reconnect back to the bigger pipes. You can also see that they went very, very deep. So we only dug about three feet or so, and that was already a lot of work to dig that much soil out. So I think for you, depending on what your soil structure is like, we knew that our soil is really hard to dig into and we will potentially hit rock where we are. So we didn't want to try to go too deep, um, but the deeper you go, then the more stable and the better um, effects you might have from your greenhouse climate battery. So that's something else to consider is the cost as well as how deep you're going to dig. So here you can see more pictures from the setup from 
from their book. And there's a lot more resources in this book, but also on their website. So I'll put a link below so you can find out more um, because we are not the total experts. The people who set this up for us had never done this before. It was pretty much an experiment from the get-go, but the climate battery concept is really sound and we have seen a modulating effect. So we only have been using this greenhouse since the spring. And so the results so far have been pretty good for keeping the greenhouse cooler. When we ran the fans in the summer, when it was you know above 50 degrees Celsius, we definitely saw a cooling effect. We would open both doors and get as much wind and uh, air flow as possible. But that extra fan running definitely helped keep things a little bit cooler and more manageable in here. It was still really hot, so it was not 100%. But in the winter as well, so far we have seen that we've had a couple of frosts outdoors overnight and the greenhouse has not frozen yet. It has stayed above four degrees Celsius. So I don't know yet because we haven't gone through a full winter, how it's gonna pan out and whether it's really going to make a huge, huge impact on freezing or not in here. But that's something that we felt was worth testing out because you never know until you try it. So here we are on the first day of our climate battery build. And so we just finished uh, digging and then you can see our cat, <laughs> Gray Gray here. Uh, so everything was dug up to three feet essentially. And then we put down these different tubes here that are going to be carrying air between the greenhouse level and the soil level. And so because we're in clay soil here, we had to bring in some sand because what happens when clay becomes wet or too dry is it really stops conducting a lot of the heat that we want to conduct. So we had to bring in some sand to replace some of the clay soil that we have here. And so the technicians have been putting down the pipes. You also see in the corners here, we have the outlets. So that is where the air will enter and exit into the network of pipes that are underneath. So we have pipes all the way through and you can see here the setup as it is being done. So this is about halfway done. So tomorrow we expect to be done with the rest of the build and we'll have a lot more to show once it's all done. But now you can kind of see how the setup works and the midway progress. So some of the things that we've been testing out is we put our fan right here in the middle and you can see it's a pretty powerful fan. And then what we did is we had duct work done so that we could pipe as high as possible. So this goes pretty much to the middle of the greenhouse. So we can grab the hottest air because hot air rises. And then likewise, you know, we can really make sure that we grab the colder air if we do have colder air and then send it back down into this area. And then what happens is it goes underground and it basically snakes a bunch of times underground in the, the pipes underneath. And then it comes back out into one of these outlets. And one of the things we also learned the hard way is to make sure to cover these. So we put this grill here so that we don't drop anything. And you know, so far we had our three-year-old drop some toys in there uh, before we had this on there. So definitely recommend covering this. And you can feel it when the fan is running. Um, either hotter air or colder air will definitely come out of here. And it is really cool to see the effects of this system. So what we have is we have in our 100 foot greenhouse, we have four fans. So one at each corner, two in the middle, and then one at the other end here. And we sometimes also use our greenhouse for woodworking projects. So you'll see some of that there. But what that ends up happening is we have these outlets again in the same corresponding corners, but they're actually opposite. So for example, the one in that corner actually outlets right here. So it has all of this pipe underground to kind of circle through before it gets out here. And so yeah, this has been our setup for our climate battery in our greenhouse. And I'm absolutely going to post an update video when we have more data about what happened, you know, whether we had a frost in here or not and how this ends up panning out in the winter. So, you know, we may end up having to add additional heating in here eventually, or definitely for the summer, we're probably going to be adding a shade cloth because it was still too hot even with the fans running. But this is something to consider if you are considering creating a greenhouse and really looking for ways to more 
passively, not 100% passive, but still improve the temperatures and you know keep your plants growing at optimal levels throughout the year. Now, if you wanna see all the plants that I have growing in here and what we learned the hard way in this first season of the gardening in the greenhouse, 